This video will explain how to disassemble, reassemble, and troubleshoot easily serviceable parts for the Hydrocell HG25, as well as the hydraulic end or oil reservoir. Please note, do not disassemble the hydraulic end unless you are a skilled mechanic. For assistance, refer to the website www.hydra-cell.com. All of our most current manuals are available online as well as other new information about Hydrocell pumps and accessories. You may also contact Water Engineering at 612-332-5681, www.wanereng.com, www.wanerint.com for European customers, or the distributor in your area. To help in the service of your pump, it is helpful if you have the serial number and model number of your pump. It is recommended that you use the Wanner Toolkit when servicing your pump. In this video, the four main sections of the hydrocell pump will be referred to as the manifold, the valve plate, the cylinder housing, and the pump housing. The manifold and valve plate are referred to as the fluid end of the pump and contains the valve assemblies and the diaphragms. The cylinder housing and the pump housing are referred to as the hydraulic end of the pump and contain the cam assembly and the hydraulic cells. For general service of the diaphragms or valves of the hydrocell pump, only the manifold and valve plate will need to be removed. The hydraulic end, cylinder housing, and the pump housing will stay intact. In this video, we will show you how to service both the fluid end of the pump as well as the hydraulic end of the pump. Please note, the four bolts that screw through the back of the housing into the cylinder casting hold the casting over the hydraulic end of the pump. Do not remove them except when repairing the hydraulic end. There are two versions of the pump housing on the HG25 pumps. The bolt and nut version has bolts through the pump housing and nuts on the rear of the bolts. The second version is the threaded version in which the perimeter bolts are threaded into the pump housing. Most recent HG25 pumps are of the Kel cell version. The Kel cell is a feature of the hydrocell pumps that controls the position of the diaphragm and greatly reduces the possibility of diaphragm rupture due to improper inlet conditions. Kel cell fitted pumps have a K in the fifth digit of the model number. Note, never leave contaminated fluid in the hydraulic end of the pump as it will ruin the bearings and components in the hydraulic end. Now, let's get started. For general service of the hydrocell pump, you will normally only be involved with the fluid end of the pump, that is the manifold, valve plate, valve assemblies, and diaphragms. Only on rare occasions will you need to disassemble the hydraulic end of the pump. Refer to the service manual and website for additional information. We will see how to remove the manifold. With a 3 8 inch or 10 millimeter hex allen wrench, remove the center bolt and its washer in the center of the manifold. Remove all the bolts that are around the perimeter of the manifold. Do not remove the four bolts that are installed through the back of the pump housing. Please note, do not turn the pump drive shaft while the manifold and valve plate are off the pump, except when removing diaphragms or repriming the hydraulic cells. Remove the manifold. Pumps with non-metallic manifolds will also have a support plate which should be removed. Inspect the manifold for warping or wear around the inlet and outlet ports. If wear is excessive, replace the manifold. To check if the manifold is warped, remove the o-rings and place a straight edge across it. A warped manifold should be replaced. To remove the valve plate, remove the three socket head cap screws with a 3 16 inch or 5 mm hex allen wrench. Inspect the valve plate in the same manner as the manifold. Please note, 
plastic valve plates and manifolds should also be inspected for cracks and replaced if necessary. Lay the valve plate on a flat surface with the valve assemblies facing up. The three inlet and three outlet valve assemblies in the pump are identical but face in opposite directions. Remove the valve seats. A seat remover is included in the Warner tool kit. Insert the valve seat removal tool through the valve seat. Carefully, press down on the handle and pull the seat straight out of the valve port. Slide this valve seat up the valve seat removal tool and remove the next valve seat. When all the valve seats are removed and on the valve seat removal tool, unscrew the plunger from the handle assembly and slide the valve seats off the valve seat removal tool. Remove the other valve assembly components. On cast iron valve plates, be careful not to break the metal ridge around the o-ring groove. Inspect the valve seat for wear and replace it if necessary. Install a new o-ring. Very gently so you don't destroy anything. Now you'll notice right here. To inspect the valve assemblies, first check the spring retainer and replace if worn. Check the valve spring. If it is shorter than a new spring, replace it. Don't just stretch the old spring. Check the valve poppet. If worn excessively, replace it. Inspect the valve seat. If it is excessively worn, replace it. Also, check the O-ring around the valve seat. Replace it if necessary. Note that the valve seat has a chamfer on one side. The poppet style valve sits on this side of the valve seat. Please note, if your pump has plastic spring retainers, there is a tetra seal or a flat O-ring between the retainer and the valve seat. Replace it if necessary. Many HG25 pumps have a dampening washer on the valve seat in the bottom of the valve port or between the valve seat and the manifold. If your pump has dampening washers, inspect them and make sure that they are reinstalled in your pump. Please refer to the Hydrocell Service and Installation Manual or the website www.hydra-cell.com to see the proper arrangement of the valve assemblies. Reinstall the valve assemblies as follows. Clean the valve ports and shoulders with emery cloth and lubricate the valve ports with lubricating gel or petroleum jelly. Install the O-ring on the valve seat. Some pumps use dampening washers between the valve seat and the manifold or valve plate. Reinstall the dampening washers if your pump is fitted with them. For the inlet, Insert the spring retainer into the valve plate. Insert the tetra seal, or the flat O-ring, on the spring retainer. Note, these flat O-rings are only used with plastic spring retainers. Then insert the spring, valve, and valve seat. Remember that the valve poppet sits on the chamfer side of the valve seat. For the outlet, insert the dampening washer, if they were on the original pump, the valve seat, valve, and spring.
the flat o-ring if the retainers are plastic, then the retainer. If the pump has metal spring retainers in the outlet valves, position them so a leg does not point toward the center of the pump. A ruptured diaphragm generally indicates a pumping system problem, and replacing only the diaphragm will not solve the larger problem. Inspect the diaphragm for the following. Half moon marks, usually caused by cavitation of the pump, refer to the troubleshooting section. Concentric circular marks, usually caused by cavitation of the pump, refer to the troubleshooting section. Small puncture, usually caused by a sharp foreign object in the fluid or by an ice particle. Diaphragm pulled away from the center screw or from the cylinder sides, usually caused by fluid being frozen in the pump or by overpressurization of the pump. Diaphragm becoming stiff and losing flexibility, usually caused by pumping a fluid that is incompatible with the diaphragm material. Diaphragm is operated at temperatures below its rated capability. Diaphragm edge chewed away, usually caused by overpressurizing the system. If there is evidence of a problem in the hydraulic end of the pump, such as a grinding of the bearings, difficulty in rotating the shaft, or other similar symptoms, you would service the hydraulic end of the pump at this point. See the section of the video titled Hydraulic End Service. After the hydraulic end is serviced, you would resume reinstalling the fluid end of the pump at the section of video titled Install Diaphragms. If you are not going to service the hydraulic end of the pump at this time, Continue this presentation by clicking on the procedure on the left entitled Flush Contaminant from Hydraulic End. Now the video will stop and allow you to make your selection. If a diaphragm has ruptured and foreign material or water has entered the oil reservoir, do not operate the pump. Check all diaphragms and replace if necessary. Then, flush the reservoir completely and refill it with fresh oil. Never leave the pump with foreign material or water in the reservoir or with the reservoir empty. To flush the contaminated oil from the hydraulic end of the pump, first remove the oil fill cap and the oil drain cap and allow all oil and contaminant to drain out of the pump. Replace the drain cap. Fill the reservoir with oil, kerosene, solvent, or other appropriate fluid. Manually turn the pump shaft to circulate the fluid and drain. Please note, if you have EPDM diaphragms, or if food grade oil is in the reservoir, do not use kerosene or solvents. Instead, flush with the same lubricant that is in the reservoir. Pumps with EPDM diaphragms have an E as the seventh digit of the model number. Repeat the flushing procedure. Fill the reservoir with fresh oil, manually turn the pump shaft to circulate the oil, and drain once again. Finally, refill the reservoir. If the oil appears milky, there is still contaminant in the reservoir. Repeat the flushing procedure until the oil appears clean. Once the oil is clean, you're ready to install new diaphragms or reinstall the old ones as appropriate. Now we will see how to inspect and remove the diaphragms. Inspect the diaphragms carefully for wear, chemical attack, rupture, or anything else that may cause diaphragm failure. If the diaphragm needs to be replaced, lift the diaphragm by one edge and turn the pump shaft until the diaphragm pulls up. This will expose machined cross holes in the valve plunger shaft behind the diaphragm. Insert the plunger holder from the water tool kit through one of the holes to hold the diaphragm up. Remove the diaphragm screw, o-ring, and follower in the center of the diaphragm.
Remove the diaphragm and inspect it carefully. Now we will see how to reinstall diaphragms. Before reinstalling the diaphragm or installing a new diaphragm, inspect the plunger for any rough surfaces or edges. If there are any rough edges which may cause problems with the diaphragm, smooth the surfaces and edges as necessary with emery cloth or a fine file. If necessary, screw the plunger tool from the water tool kit into the valve plunger. Pull the valve plunger up until the cross holes in the valve plunger are exposed. Insert the plunger holder from the water tool kit through the top hole to hold the plunger away from the cylinder housing and to keep the valve plunger from turning when the diaphragm is being installed. Place the diaphragm onto the plunger ridge side out. Place the O-ring onto the follower screw. Center the diaphragm follower on the diaphragm. Apply a small amount of removable thread locker to the threads of the follower screw. Insert the follower screw with O-ring through the diaphragm follower and diaphragm and screw it into the valve plunger. Hold the plunger holder and torque the follower screw to 18 inch-pounds or 2 newton meters. Repeat this procedure for the plungers and diaphragms of the other two cylinders.